September is Mental Health Awareness Month. According to the Kaiser Family Foundation report, more and more of us are struggling with symptoms of anxiety or depression, especially since COVID. Paul Thomas, who goes by PT, believes that talking about mental health is the first step in reducing the stigma of it. And that's why he's created a nonprofit organization, Living Foundation, to promote a positive outlook on life, to reduce the stigma associated with depression and mental illness, and to prevent suicides. His message is a personal one from his heart. We talk with him by Zoom. It's very personal to me. Um, I lost my father to suicide in uh, 2013 and uh, subsequently, you know, went through kind of a tough time myself, to be really honest, in, in really the year or two after that time period and still continues to this day. And so in, in 2015, we founded this organization called the Livin Foundation really to to so hopefully open up and start more conversations about mental health and about mental illness, because I think that we still see those that stigma associated with it quite a bit. And I think that's where we're just trying to really reduce that and, and change that narrative. You know, it seemed like, especially during the Olympics with some of the athletes coming out about their mental health challenges, that that was bringing a lot of awareness to the issue in a big way. And did you see that as well, that that was opening up some of that dialogue, getting people talking about it. Yeah, like absolutely. I mean, whenever you're going to have somebody in a, you know, a world stage like that, right, with like Simone Biles, and we have this idea that, you know, that these, you know, celebrities or athletes or whomever it is, like that they are, you know, perfect or infallible in some capacity. And all of a sudden, when they say, hey, you know, I'm not well. And we kind of look at it, what do you mean you're not well? Like it, it makes us think, I think it makes everybody think. And so I think you're absolutely right. I think it brought a lot of light to, you know, mental illness and just mental health challenges in general. And, and I think our hope is maybe with, with living that those conversations can take place not only on the big stage with, you know, the Olympics or whatever, but hopefully that those conversations can then, you know, kind of permeate into our everyday lives a little bit, right? And, and we've kind of joked internally that, you know, what if we could talk about mental health, at, you know, the same way we talk about the weather, you know, you and I can get an elevator with each other. And, you know, we can talk about the weather for a couple minutes or five minutes or whatever. But yet we can't talk to our, you know, the people that are the closest to us about, you know, how we're feeling, you know, mentally, or, or if we're struggling with things like that just seems, you know, it seems off. So I think we're trying to change that narrative. You know, and I think a lot of people, they feel like if they bring it up, that that could, um, you know, maybe um, bring someone to suicide or make their depression worse. But you're saying that it's important, the first step in um, preventing or reducing that stigma is to talk about it. I, I, th I think so, yeah. I mean, by all means, you know, I always say that, I, you know, I'm not really officially a therapist. I'm just someone that has gone through, you know, my own level of trauma. But I think in general, the more that we as people and as humans can, you know, find a safe place and can confide in others, you know, whether it's a friend or a family member or even a, a, a stranger, or a therapist or whatever, I think the more that we can open up about, you know, our, our feelings and, and maybe what we're struggling with internally, I think generally speaking, the better off we're going to be. You know, I had one somebody, you know, one time talk about depression, where like, if you personified depression, specifically that depression would love, you know, isolation, and you know, keeping things silent, and really like the idea that you're not sharing these things with others. And so if you can flip that, specifically with depression, I think if you can have those conversations and be more comfortable about it, I think you're going to be, you know, miles ahead of hopefully preventing, you know, issues or even future suicides. Tell us a little bit about the, the, your foundation, the um, Living Foundation, and what what made you decide to to create the foundation in the first place. Yeah, it started because, um, as I mentioned, when I struggled with the loss of my dad, you know, I, I had a lot of bottled up emotions, and I think I was trying to be 
you know, maybe strong because I thought that that's what, you know, society needed from me or that's what my family needed from me or whatever. And I'll never forget, I had an opportunity um, as a radio personality to talk about my situation and how I lost my dad and how subsequently that had sort of changed my outlook and my perspective. And we happened to be at an event a little bit later on where a gentleman came up to me and said, you know, I just want to thank you for opening up about mental illness and about losing someone to suicide, because it turns out that he had lost his niece uh, previous that year. And he said that it gave him some strength and maybe some comfort that he wasn't alone in sort of his struggles and, and, and the things he was dealing with in terms of the loss of his niece. And so it was kind of right then and there that I realized that if we could create a movement, right, this idea that maybe I'm not comfortable you know, wearing a shirt that says, you know, I lost my father to suicide or that I've struggled with depression or that I, that I've dealt with PTSD or whatever. But if I could wear a shirt or have a bracelet that has, you know, living on it and other people could sort of, you know, come to this, this community as a whole, that we could build a movement and we could bring people together, um, you know, with a community that we don't normally talk about. And you ultimately don't have to go that far to find somebody that has struggled mm-hmm. themselves personally, or, you know, that, that has dealt with somebody in their life that has struggled, or maybe they've lost someone to suicide. And that's an unfortunate thing. But I think if we can be more comfortable opening up about that, and maybe even make building those connections, I think our hope is that we'll be able to find people and prevent uh, where someone maybe would have been traveling down the wrong path. And maybe we can sort of bring them back um, to more of an element where they maybe will open up and talk to somebody and get some help that they need. So as a result of your foundation, you also have a weekend retreat for certain individuals that have lost someone to suicide. Tell us about that. Yep. So we we call it Camp Living. And what it is, is the idea behind it is, I think with my family specifically, and a lot of families that I've talked to, when you lose someone to suicide, there are obviously a lot of broken pieces like there would be with any loss, but it's a little bit different in that there's kind of this perceived choice. And there's like a lot of struggles, I think, internally as a family, there's maybe some guilt, there's sadness, frustration, there's just a lot of emotions. And so we kind of thought like, what if we could create an environment, sort of a a weekend retreat, if you will, where families that have all kind of been through that same struggle could maybe you know, connect with each other and ultimately also disconnect with the rest of the world and hopefully reconnect with their family, you know, through therapeutic activities, but maybe not necessarily therapy. I think therapy is really, really strong and good, but unfortunately, even therapy as a whole, I think a lot of people are either tentative or they're, they're nervous about it, or they're anxious in those, in those spaces. But what if we could create just, again, a safe environment where people could come and they could maybe participate in activities that are therapeutic in nature and, and hopefully get some healing and, and maybe find some peace with, with each other and with their situation. By no means is it going to you know, I bring somebody from a loss back and and certainly, you know, you're never going to have to be able to change the past, but maybe if you can sort of change the narrative of what the future looks like, I think that's what we're hoping to do. So we call it Camp Living. Uh, Right now it's an annual event and we really hope that we can uh, make it ultimately multiple uh, times, maybe a a um, couple times a year, maybe even bring some different types of people together, whether it's a spouse only retreat or maybe like a kids only retreat or whatever, depending on their loss. Nice. That sounds wonderful. And then you also have your music festival. You're going to have a third one coming up here this month. Yeah, awesome. yeah, we do. Yeah, we've got uh, something that we call the Living Music Festival. So again, kind of this idea that, you know, a lot of organizations have fundraisers that are golf events or 5Ks or, or walks and everything like that. And, and that's perfectly fine. I just think that we, um, number one, with me being kind of in the radio and like music business, like that was kind of my opportunity to maybe to carve out something for, for our organization. But also live in, I think, is 
we try to do things in sort of an innovative and unconventional way. And so by putting together this, this music festival, it again brings people together that have been you know, affected by mental illness or, or um, you know, suicide in some capacity. And again, kind of gives them that safe space, that safe environment, while they're also doing things that we all want to do in the first place, right? There's a, a barbecue rib and chicken eating contest. That's a lot of fun for people. There's a, a cornhole bags tournament. There's some activities in the morning on Saturday with yoga, meditation. Um, you know, there's some coffee and conversations. There's camping there and of course music. And so you just get food and beverages and people and camping and campfires and you hopefully bring people together and allow them to embrace life in a positive way while still reflecting and remembering those um, that brought us to the event in the first place. And you have some big um, performers coming? Yeah, so um, it's 10 bands total over three stages headlined by Eddie Montgomery of Montgomery Gentry. Um, you know, and the interesting thing about that scenario is, you know, Eddie Montgomery, it wasn't uh, a suicide, but he lost Troy Gentry, his duo partner, in a very tragic helicopter crash. And so, you know, even though the loss is maybe a little bit different, because it's still a tragic loss. And so, you know, I think we all as a family and as a living family can embrace those situations and what that trauma, like ultimately how that affects us, you know what I mean? And so I think that we're excited to have Eddie there. He's a great performer and then Chris Cruzy from The Voice and a bunch of other uh, local and regional talent from really all over the, the upper Midwest and even coming in from Nashville. Yeah, and I would think especially after COVID, people are ready to get out and to oh, yeah, yeah, they are. celebrate. <laughs> yeah, I think there's life. an element of, uh, yes. yeah, we're, we're all, you know, kind of itching to, to get out there and it's an outdoors event. So I think we're, we're able to exist in that landscape where we can, you know, spread out uh, plenty if we need to. The facility that it takes place at is ERX Motor Park, which is uh, in Elk River off of 169. They've got over 400 acres there, so plenty of space there to, to spread out and people feeling comfortable, uh, you know, whatever their situation is as it pertains to uh, health and wellness. So we're we're just excited about it. And yeah, we're it's uh, September 17th and 18th, and we couldn't be more uh, more chance to get to get back out there and make it happen. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to have you on Inside Healthcare. Thank you so much.